It's music time in Africa. Hello again and welcome back. This is Sue Moran and today I have another program of traditional and popular music of Africa. We're going to visit the Islamic Republic of Mauritania today. This will be the first time we've presented Mauritanian music on our Music Time show. And to help me tell you about it, our Voice of America music man, Leo Sarkeesian, will be joining us. So once again, friends, I'm hoping you'll stay with me for the next half hour for Music Time in Africa. The first time I listened to the exotic sounds of Mauritanian music, I realized why it has been called music of the Moors. And the musical instruments and the scales employed by the musicians are as exotic as the sounds. As I promised, Leo Sarkeesian is going to tell us about this music. But first, I'd like to welcome him back. Hello, Leo. Or should I say goodbye? It's really a job trying to keep up with your travels. Uh, hi, Sue. Well, you're about right this time. It's almost hello and goodbye. I recently returned, as you know, from an extensive trip to ten different countries on the continent. The North, the South, East, West, and even Central Africa. But soon I'll be on my way back to Africa again to record and collect more sounds for our VOA music library and your programs. The uh, music of Mauritania, Sue, is based on an extremely intricate uh, musical theory, especially the techniques of playing musical instruments. Musicians in Mauritania are professionals who form their own special category in the Moor society and are commonly known as griots. Also, I must point out, Sue, that there are both men and women griots. And they hand down, orally of course, from generation to generation, the techniques of their craft especially the instrumental techniques. What are the main musical instruments used by these professional musicians, Leo? Well, in the first place, there are two main instruments played by the Moorish griots, the tidinet and the ardin. The tidinet, which appears to be reserved for men, is a four-string lute, and it sounds like this. It has a wooden sound box with a skin stretched over it. The neck of the instrument is simply a wooden stick, a pole fixed into the sound box under the skin. And the strings are stretched over a bridge and fixed at one end to the tip of the neck and at the other end to leather rings around the neck proper. The strings are tuned by moving the leather rings. Most musicians usually add small bells to the tip of the neck pole are even small metal chains that rattle while the musician is playing. But probably the most characteristic thing about the instrument is the method of playing. That is, the musician simultaneously taps the stretched skin of the sound box with his right thumb while playing to mark the rhythm. You said, Leo, that the instrument, the tidnit, appears to be reserved for men. Does that mean that the women griots have their own special musical instrument? Exactly, Sue. The second main instrument in Mauritanian music is the ardin, played by the Moorish women griots. The ardin is actually a harp with about ten strings. I'm saying about because the number of strings varies frequently. The neck of the ardin, which is more than three feet long, is fixed into the half shell of a large calabash used as a resonator. The resonator is covered with a taut skin and the strings run perpendicular to it. The strings are fixed to pegs placed at various levels and regular intervals along the neck pole. The resonator, of course, amplifies the sounds of the vibrating strings and often the ardin player may stop playing the strings and tap the skin covering the resonator like a drum. In this first recording you've selected, Sue, 
The lead vocalist, Munina, is a very famous singer in Mauritania, considered one of the best professional women griots. Usually she plays the Ardin herself when she sings, and here she's also accompanied by two tidinit lutes and a tubo. The tubo is a drum. Her young son, who has been trained as a griot, joins in a singing dialogue with his mother. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh, I enjoyed that very much, Leo. It certainly is different from all the other types of music we've presented up until now. You also mentioned earlier that the art of music in Mauritania is based on an extremely intricate musical theory. What do you mean by that? To begin with, Sue, it appears that there are three principal styles in Moorish classical music. The first is known as lechal, meaning black, and the next is called lebiad, meaning white, and the third is called zrag, the spotted style. Now, each of these styles, or ways of playing, has its own sequence of different modes. A mode in Moorish music is fairly close to the Western idea of a mode, though not exactly in the same scope. It is often difficult to determine the actual mode in which a piece of music is being played. There are at least four principal modes within each of the three styles of music. The modes are known as Kjar, Varro, Senima, and Begi. The first song you just heard, Sue, was played in the Kar mode. But it gets more complex when you consider the styles of music to which a mode is played. Now this is really where it does get complex, Sue. The name of the mode changes depending in which style it's played. That is, if the mode kad is played in the black style, it's called ntamas, and in the white style of playing, it's called mekamusa, and the same kad scale played in the spotted style would be called nufel. So you see, Sue, it can get very complex. Actually, each mode or scale in Moorish music is characterized not only by its particular musical content, but also by the circumstances, themes and moods in which it is conventionally connected. For example, the mode kad is linked with the idea of gladness and joy, and the mode varo with the theme or circumstances of war and the idea of courage, strength and pride. And then finally, the mode cinema is associated with a number of more complex black and white styles, while the mode begi is connected with nostalgia, melancholy, a lament. I'm really amazed, Leo, how much there is to this music now that you've explained something about it. Yet I shouldn't be surprised because I've heard you speak so many times about the richness which exists in African traditional music. And I think it's time for more music. Okay, Sue. So here's the second recording of Mauritania music, and it's by another famous Moorish musician, the celebrated Sidi Ahmed al Bake al Awa, well known as a virtuoso on the Tidinit, and he's also a well known singer. In this number, he sings in the style of the Black Way, in the mode Seni Kad. <laughs> سبقت على محبتها أما إلا قطارفة قر قوامس العزون سمر الأقواب الأقواب أقوام يحمدها مهما تعام مما عقب دير وتقلس Oh, 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 oh,
زبر على محبتي إلا قطار فتنقر قام سو والسو شمر الأقوام That was Moorish music from Mauritania, sung by a celebrated musician who accompanied himself on the Moorish lute, the Tidnit. It seems to me, Leo, that Moorish music has the same style and feeling as the music of the Arab world. It has, Sue, especially in its conception of modes. Yet it is still difficult to determine under what conditions, when and how it came under this influence. It is very probable that the Berbers and certain African peoples have also played a part in the formation and development of Moorish music as it is today. For the moment, uh, very little is known. Systematic and thorough musical analysis would surely throw some light on the subject. In this next recording now, we hear another celebrated griot musician playing the tidinit and singing in the varro mode. Usually a concert of Moorish music almost invariably begins with a sort of instrumental introduction, during which the griot adjusts the tuning of the instrument and getting into the mood of the chosen mode. I'm 
غيواني شديد ذي النوبة عاني شديد خيدي وضرو يا رأفتك سار القيد اللدى وغريدي وقيدي That bit of Moorish music was played and sung by a well-known griot musician from the town of Mededra, near the coast just south of Nuashat, capital of the Mauritanian Republic. Do the musicians improvise the verses they sing, or are these well-known songs, Leo? The words of songs, Sue, are almost always verses learnt by heart. It's very rare that a griot would improvise the words of a song as he sings. Actually, the musicians can develop a whole song from just a few verses, prolong a syllable, or even confine himself to the repetition of a very brief phrase. The expressive nature of a poem, the themes which it develops, and its metrical structure often correspond precisely to the musical mode or scale, just as the theme and mode do in this last recording you have here. By the way, this is an excellent recording. It was recorded in the camp of the Amir of Tagant, east of Nuakshat, in the central part of the country. Several of the Amir's musicians perform war music, and the mode varo, of course, must be used. This is the mode that is linked with the theme of war and the idea of courage, strength, and pride. The rhythm accompaniment in this recording is the tubal drum and the daruma. The dharma is a long, hollowed-out calabash, open at each end and skillfully manipulated so that the palm of the hand and the thigh tap against the openings to produce the rhythmic sounds. The instrument often has a necklace coiled around the calabash. In this case, the sound of the necklace striking the calabash like a rattle makes more noise than the air vibrating inside. The dharma is a popular instrument which women usually play for amusement.
Our time has run out again, friends, and this brings to a close today's Music Time in Africa show. We featured the exotic music of the Islamic Republic of Mauritania, and our Voice of America musicologist Leo Sarkeesian was our guest today, telling us about the complex musical theory and richness of Moorish music in that country. I hope you enjoyed listening to the recordings and that you'll join me again next week at the same time. Now this is Sumaran saying goodbye for Music Time in Africa. Now this listening reminder from the Voice of America's Africa service. Be sure to tune in African Panorama weekdays over most of these same frequencies for the latest world and African news. You'll also hear in-depth reports on African news developments direct from our correspondents on that continent as well as from those around the world. You can hear African Panorama twice daily at 16 and 19 hours Greenwich Mean Time on frequencies in the 11, 13, 16, 19, 41, 49, and 75 meter bands shortwave. And now until next time, this is Bill Castle in Washington saying so long for Music Time in Africa.